Every night at closing time, a man appears, pulls down the blind, locks the door and leaves that world behind. Then within the music shop, everything comes to a stop. It's still enough to hear a fair drop. And then the world. Sounds begin to die, grows quiet with a final sigh. Promptly at the stroke of nine, the man appears, rolls up the blind, starts the whole thing over one time, and then the world. Good. Seven and eight. Good. All right. <clears throat> Some milk. Mm. Where's the knife? Mm -hmm. ah! Ah! <laughs> What's cooking? Ooh. Jack in the box, what are you doing out of the box, huh? Oh, I just wanted to get out, you know, stretch my legs, get a breath of fresh air. Well, I can understand that, but a jack-in-the-box is supposed to be in the box. That's his nature. Oh, well, mm. maybe, but sometimes I get, you know, I get the urge to travel. Uh -huh. Get out and see what's on the other side of my lid. Well, <laughs> I suppose that's true. You know, the trouble with us is we do not see life through the eyes of a toy. Oh, yes. true, true, true. Yeah, that. So, <laughs> what are you doing anyway? Oh, I'm, I'm just baking a little cake. Oh. Yeah. I call it Geppetto Surprise Cake. Oh, <laughs> oh, watch. You can watch, yes. As a matter of fact, you can help me if you like. Oh, you can read. Can... You can read now. I know. I know you can read. Follow the recipe word for word. Do not make a mistake word now. Word. All right. <laughs> now, what is the next ingredient? Okay. Okay. Six eggs. Six eggs. Uh -huh. Very well. <laughs> That's and that's two. Oh, you're fast. Yeah. And that's four. And here we are. Ah. Oh, you're good. All right, now, Jack, what's next? With the shells. With the shells? That's what it says here. Are you sure? <laughs> oh. Uh, very well. With the shells. I have, I've never tried this cake before. It must be something new. Oh. I see. All right. Ooh. There we are. And then now, what's next? One carrot. What? <laughs> Carrot in a, are you sure? That's what it says. That's here. what it says. Very well. I put the carrot. And we make the, mm, oh, the carrot. I won't. All I right. Now we got the carrot. Right. All right. Now what else? One banana. A banana. Yes, that's all right. Ooh. Now. <clears throat> with the peel. Oh, uh, with, with the peel. Oh, that's what it says here. Oh, that's what it says here. That's what we follow. Uh -huh. Very well. Here we are with the banana. All peeled up and down. All right. We'll try this. Ah, here we are. Oh, that looks don't delicious. Don't forget the radishes. The ra what radishes? I don't know the what... radishes! It says in there. That's, that's what, what it says, says here. <laughs> All right. All right. We put the three radishes right here. We mix it up. I think I should put a little bit more flour to add more consistency. I've never heard such a recipe, but it must be something different. It will be a surprise. Oh, oh Figaro will love it. Figaro would love it. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. There we are. Now we put it in a pie pan. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Look at this. Oh, how wonderful. How delicious. Uh -huh. Isn't it good? Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. All right, oh, here we are. All right, and now I'll put a little bit of sprinkling on top. Oh, Vigoro will be so surprised. <laughs> and a little bit of cream. Oh, yes, Vigoro loves cream. That's what he does. 
Oh, 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 take your fingers out of the pop. You must never touch that. There you are. Isn't that delicious? Look at this, huh? Now I'll put it, I'll put it in the oven. Yes. And oh, 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 the fire's going down. I, 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 I'm going to put some wood in it. That's what I'm going to put. Ah! And we put the wood. Ah, ah, ha. Good. All right. I will take the pipe. Yes. I, no, I, I think you should put a little more sprinkling on. Yes, that's what I'll do. Ah! You come to visit old Geppetto? Now, why would you want to visit old Geppetto instead of playing outside with your friends, eh? <laughs> oh, it's such a lovely day. Well, oh, eh? uh, well, I don't like playing with the other children so much. Well, since when? Well, I, I remember seeing you playing hopscotch and hide-and-seek with the best of them. Something must be bothering you. Bothering me? Yes. You don't know the half of it. But well, that sounds pretty serious. Well, wait. Maybe you better tell Geppetto. Only if you promise not to laugh at me or and make you, fun of me. You know I would never do that to you. No, I, I guess you wouldn't. Well, well, there's this bully on the playground, and he's been picking on me, and I'm, you know, scared. I don't think I ever want to go back to the playground again. Oh, well, that's no way to react to a bully. Well, I don't know anything else to do. Oh, you don't, huh? <laughs> well, Geppetto knows a thing or two about bullies. You do? Well, sure. You don't think I've lived so long and not have had uh, an encounter with a few bullies of my own, huh? People who just seem to want to have their own way, no matter what. What do you do about it? Oh, there are many things to do, many ways to deal with negative things in life. You know, there are bullies inside of you as well. Yes, as on the playground. Well, what do you mean? Oh, I mean, there are things inside of you sometimes that keep you from getting uh, what you really want. Things that bully you into doing what's not really good for yourself. Well, I'm not sure I understand. Maybe the best way to explain is by telling you a story. A story? Sure. Huh. Haven't you ever <clears throat> noticed that sometimes you learn things through stories much better than just a few words here and there? Well, I guess you're right. Yes, uh, come around here. Sit down, sit down. Yes. Sit. Good. Sure I'm right. Now you just listen to the story about the Frosty Giant. <laughs> the Frosty Giant? Oh, you never heard that story? Oh, well, no wonder you're scared of bullies. I think you came to Geppetto just in time. Now, listen to this. Once upon a time, there was this giant frozen in a glacier for a hundred and hundred years. Finland is located in the uppermost corner of Europe, very close to the North Pole, and its winters are long and very chilly. But the Finnish children love those snowy days, and it's not just because of Christmas, but also because they are able to hear once more the story of the Frosty Giant. Maybe if the children are extra good this year, they can receive presents from both he and Santa Claus. Whoa, I don't think they've ever heard of Odin. I think it's time I told them of Odin and the Frosty Giant. You say the Frosty yes. Giant? Please tell us. Okay, let's see now, where shall I begin? As I recall, this story begins long, long ago, long before my great-great-grandfather was born. Books hadn't even been invented then. So this story has been passed on from father to children all these many generations. In those days, our land was inhabited by very strong but foolish giants. For many years, these giants lived in peace and harmony. 
and each giant had a small dwarf to serve him. But these dwarfs were very mean and cunning, and one day they decided to trick the foolish giants into fighting a war against Odin, the greatest and most powerful of all our Vikings' ancestors' gods. Were they all defeated? Almost, but one giant did manage to escape by running away to the Arctic Sea and hiding there. But it was very cold, and the giant was soon covered from head to toe with ice and snow. And that is how he came to be known as the Frosty Giant. Oh, what's this? It looks as though Mary has already dropped off to sleep. Okay, that's enough. Time for bed now. All right. Good night, Father. And thank you. Good night. Uh, um, uh, and don't forget uh, to say your prayers. Okay. But the legend of the Frosty Giant didn't end there. Odin decided to cast a magic spell over him so that he might sleep for a thousand years. Odin was afraid that if the frosty giant was allowed to walk the land freely, the people of Finland would have been frightened and alarmed. But now the thousand years had passed and the giant was beginning to awake. Oh. Oh. Whoa. How long have I been asleep? Why, it's been a thousand years. Oh, a thousand years? I wonder if anything's changed. What do you call that? That's called a railroad. All sorts of funny little cars run up and down those rails making noises. I think we'd have more quiet if you just smashed it. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> and what do you call those things down there? Those are called telephone wires, and they are full of the voices of the people who live in these funny little towns. I think you'd better tear those apart, too. Oh, all right. <laughs> what a delicious smell. What is it? It's Christmas. Every house in the town is filled with delicious cookies and puddings. Why don't you just go in and help yourself? Oh, boy, it smells so tasty. Come on. Let's try it again. <gasps> Tricking me. That wasn't very nice at all. You let my brother go. Why are they throwing snowballs? Aren't they afraid? They're my friends. I don't understand. Well, that's what friends are for. To help each other no matter how bad the trouble is. I wish I had a friend to help me. But all I have is you. And I don't think you've been very nice. <laughs> tell me, is it wrong to tear up railroad tracks? Of course. And telephone wires, too? Yes, that too. And to steal someone's cakes and cookies? That's the worst. You'll make all the children cry. I think those children were crying. That's all right. If you fix everything you've broken and apologize to the children, it'll be all right. Really? Is it true? I'm sure of it. All you have to do... Yeah, it's a train! The train is coming!
<laughs> the frosty giant quickly began to repair all the damage that he had done. He was so busy with his work that he didn't notice that while he was sleeping for a thousand years, his body had been turned completely to ice. <sighs> And as the warm summer sun beat down, he began to melt. Well, I lost my sweat, but I gained a new friend. Do you mean me? Yes, let's be friends. Say, why are you sweating so? You're melting! You've got to get out of the sun! But first, I have to take my friend home. Ollie tried to make the frosty giant go back to the Arctic Sea so that he wouldn't melt. But the giant had never had a friend before, and he wanted to stay with Ollie. Please, you've got to go back before it's too late. No time at all, the frosty giant had melted completely away, leaving only a small, cool pond. I tried to make him go back. He just wouldn't listen to me. But Ollie needn't have been so sad because he gave the frosty giant one of our most precious gifts, the gift of friendship. And that is the story of the frosty giant. One thing I found is that fear makes you seem smaller than you really are. And whatever you are afraid of, much bigger than it really is. And so maybe the solution is to make whatever we fear more whimsical and smaller than human size. <laughs> That's the good thing about being a puppet maker. <laughs> no, 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 no. Suppose a fear dragon huh, appears before you huh, and you are frightened, huh? You can make him have one tooth in the middle of his mouth, floppy ears, and be purple. And suddenly, he is not so frightening anymore. Oh, nobody can be scared of a dragon who is purple, and with floppy ears, and one tooth in the middle of his mouth. <laughs> That's the way to tame our fears. Now, in fact, I've just finished the toy. I'm going to show you. He is a very ferocious. He will be coming here straight from his ship. A bucket of mud. Oh, ferocious he is. Oh, my. Or is he? Wait, I'll show you. <laughs> Watch. Here he comes. Anything that makes us hesitate and doubt ourselves. You're right. That's just the way I felt about the bully on the playground. Hmm. But that's the way uh, we all uh, feel sooner or later. But there's always one sure remedy for feeling afraid. Well, what's that? That's to make friends with the very thing that you fear. Oh. <laughs> Well, how can you do that? Well, just the way you see. 
by seeing the humorous and human side of the bully, by learning to find the good side of the character. Oh, how can there be a good side to a bully? Well, just like uh, the Frosty Giant, and just like my ferocious friend, the pirate. You'll see that if you look for it, there's a good side to everything. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, if you get some right, then why don't you go out and play with the other children? Come, come. Come on. I'm sure you'll have a better time outside on a beautiful and delightful day like this. You know, Geppetto, I don't know that I've ever had a better friend than you. And I don't know that I've ever had a better friend than you. Now, you run along and play, or you can come back later. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Geppetto. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, child. Every night at closing time, a man appears, pulls down the blind. Locks the door and leaves that world behind. And then within the music shop, everything comes to a stop. It's still enough to hear a fairy drop. And then the world. Sound begin to die, grows quiet with a final sigh. 